This is Eddie McDonald. I'm a staff attorney with South Carolina Legal Services. I'm here to talk to you about bankruptcy. Please understand that this is not a substitution for having your own lawyer, that we do not represent you, that we cannot give you advice about your particular case, and that I may not cover every issue that can come up in your case. Now we're going to talk about the requirements for filing a Chapter 7 or Chapter 13 bankruptcy. For an individual Chapter 7, you must have less income than your living expenses and your debts must be primarily consumer. That means that f at least 51% of your debts are consumer debts, not business debts. To be a Chapter 13 debtor, you must be an individual with regular income. Regular income means wages, retirement, Social Security, rental income, food stamps, or any other income that is received on a regular basis. In addition, your secured debts, those are debts with collateral, must be less than $1,081,400, and your unsecured debts must be less than $360,475. In addition, each debtor must finish a credit counseling course prior to filing bankruptcy, must file all tax returns that are due, must have pay advices which are pay stubs or other evidence of income for the past 60 days, and must be current on rent and child support. The rest of these slides will hopefully let you understand what you should be worried about before and after you file bankruptcy. Please understand that we believe it is always best that you be represented by a competent lawyer. In completing the petition for filing bankruptcy, please be sure that you list any prior bankruptcies that you have filed within the last eight years. Please be sure that you list any other names that you have been known by in the past eight years. Be careful that you properly select the venue where you are filing the bankruptcy, which means that you have been in South Carolina for at least six months. If you pay the filing fee in installments, be sure to pay those installments on time or early because the failure to pay those installments can have the bankruptcy dismissed. In completing Schedule B, please be sure to review what you have listed for cash, which should include any money you have in your pocket, at home, or even buried in the backyard. Security deposits are any monies that you have paid to utility companies or landlords for that purpose, even though it was many years ago. Books should include Bibles and cookbooks. Jewelry should include costume jewelry, valuable jewelry, and not so valuable jewelry. Guns and cameras and sports equipment should include all of those things, including small pocket cameras. List everything with a good value. Make sure you put down an honest value for each item. The value should be what that particular item could be sold for in a retail store or second-hand store. In completing Schedule I, please be sure to complete number 17, which is any anticipated changes for the coming year. There is sometimes an issue as to whether an anticipated tax refund should be listed as monthly income. If you receive a tax refund of, of about the same amount each year, you may want to divide that amount by 12 and add it in as regular income. In completing Schedule J, again, be sure you complete number 19, which are any anticipated changes coming up in the next year. And then we have the website for the IRS tables, which can give you figures for food, housing, and so forth. On Schedules D, E, and F, make sure everybody that you owe money to is listed. Do not play favorites. Be sure you list all family members, 
all favored doctors or favorite credit cards. It does not matter. You must list everyone to whom you owe money. The statement of intent is extremely important because this is where in the Chapter 7 bankruptcy you tell the court and the creditors what you're going to do with your secured creditors, those with collateral. Whether you're going to avoid those liens such as with finance companies or whether you're going to reaffirm the debt as with a car financing or whether you're going to try to pay and keep the collateral such as with a mortgage. Statement of Financial Affairs is a complete history of your financial picture for the past couple of years and today. In paragraph 1, you are listing all of your income from wages for the current calendar year to date, the last calendar year, and the year before that. In paragraph 2, you are going to list all other income for the same period of time. That income can be gifts, food stamps, unemployment, rental income, retirement income, Social Security, or income from any other source. Continuing with the Statement of Financial Affairs, in paragraph 3A are payments to regular creditors. This is where you list any time that you have paid more than $600 to any one creditor over the past three months. If you have, you list the creditor here and the information requested on that schedule. If you have not paid a total of $600 to any one creditor, you would list no one. This will include your normal, regular payments. So almost always, you will list car payments here, mortgage payments here, if you in fact have paid them for the last three months. In 3B, you list all payments in the past year to a family member, regardless of how much you have repaid a family member, even if it's a dollar. In number seven, you list all gifts. These are defined as being more than $200 to any one family member in the past year, or more than $100 to any nonprofit or charitable organization, including your church. In number eight, you list all your losses in the past year from fire, theft, or gambling, even if that loss has been reimbursed by insurance. And in number nine, you list here any monies that you have paid to a lawyer or other advisor about bankruptcy, and you also include the credit counseling course you took if you paid for that course. When you have completed the bankruptcy and actually filed it, you will have a meeting of creditors. The trustee who has been appointed for your case will preside at that meeting. Prior to the meeting, which is usually four to six weeks after you have filed your bankruptcy, the trustee will want certain documents from you. Each trustee will be different. The trustee will send you a letter asking for those documents. The documents most of them ask for are copies of your tax returns, sometimes for up to three years, bank statements for up to the last three months, the car registration and tax value for your current car or cars, and the title if it's not being held by a creditor, the tax value for any real estate that you own, any financial declaration that you have filed in the family court in the past two years, and any family court orders that require you to pay child support or alimony. Some other thoughts that you should consider in filing your bankruptcy and what occurs after you file. One of these is called lien avoidance. You can avoid judgment liens. These are judgments that have been entered against you by some creditor in the past, or a security lien, which can be collateral for a loan. There are certain rules for this. There's a certain process for this, and you must follow those rules and process correctly to avoid those liens. When you go to the meeting of creditors, you must take your driver's license and your Social Security card with you. Without those documents, the meeting will not be held. Please remember that you are signing all your bankruptcy documents under oath, and liability, criminal liability can apply if you lie. Exemptions are extremely important, and you must 
record and apply for those correctly because exemptions are what protects your property and allows you to keep a good amount of property after the bankruptcy. During the bankruptcy, you may want to object to a claim that is filed by one of your creditors because it may be for an incorrect amount, it may be for an incorrect creditor, and there is a certain process that you have to do and a certain time limit on that process. The same is true for an objection to your discharge. The discharge is what means that you no longer owe those debts. There are some debts that are not discharged. There are some debts that a creditor can say, please don't discharge this debt. Or there are certain instances in which the creditor or the trustee can ask that you not be discharged from any of your debts. All of these are separate processes and must be done properly and defended properly if you are to realize your goal of a discharge of your debts.